Fisher, and it's time for, yes, another all-new episode of Sacto Active Rock. Thank you for joining me. And I'd also like to thank my special guest, Cake, for joining me. They're here in the studio tonight. We're going to chat with them just a little bit and also see a performance by them. So thanks, you guys, for being here. First of all, I think introductions are in order. Let's, like, just go from right to left. Over here on my, what is this, my right, we have Sean McFessel, and he plays bass. Over here we have John McRae, he does vocals and guitar. And uh, next to him is Greg Brown, who plays guitar also. Uh, next to him is Frank, Fra Frank French, that's a tongue twister. And he plays drums. And over here we have Vince DeFore, who plays trumpet. And so basically, how long has Cake been together? Now, didn't it start off just sort of as a John McRae solo acoustic project, or has this been a, like a, like how long have you been a band? Um, well, we've been a band um, probably since, what do you think, like June or July or August? I'm or pretty sure it was August. The whole thing sort of congealed in August. I mean, well, the way things happen is it, not like somebody says, well, let's just start a band. It usually like people play together and you know, then they play together for a while, and then somebody else comes in and plays together and with them, and and then eventually you say, well, maybe we need a name. So it sort of happened like that. I have played solo um, uh, before, um, but uh, everybody in the band has played in different incarnations of of bands uh, around this area. Um, but maybe I don't know. Should we should we uh, spare them of a uh, quick resume of everybody or? You, well, uh, I mean, do you think it's in order? Do you want to do you want to tell about your past, your checkered past? <laughs> I just got out of jail last week. Frank oh, just got out of jail yes. last week. Got out of jail. That's good. Oh. What 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 bands have you been in, Frank? Since you have the most checkered past. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I, former member of True West, uh, Thin White Rope, going way back to the fabulous '70s. Uh, Permanent Wave and a band called The Mumbles, and uh, the rest is history. It's, that's ah. just the way it is. Were you in a band called uh, a White Knight? Yeah. Is that a, is that like <laughs> is that supposed <laughs> or, to be like a secret because it's so? No, no, no. Uh, he scary. he really wasn't in in a band called White Knight. But uh, but you know there are those lounge bands that um, you know like. Satin nights or things like that. You yeah, know, uh, those live from those the Holiday are, Inn, we what, have Fort Jackson and Jill. Well, I was in a band called the Dalai Lamas, and also a band called the Roughhousers. I fronted that band, and I, yeah, and Frank was in the Roughhousers also, which he doesn't even remember. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. the forgotten years. And uh, what about you, Greg? <laughs> uh, I was in Saturday's Child. And Greg was in a band uh, called Saturday's Child that. Um, didn't a lot of people who um, watched Saturday's Child, they took acid a lot of times? Um, I never saw anybody T taking it drugs. It would be scary to take acid and look at that drum set that dude played. Wasn't that you yeah. the one with the funky, scary yeah, drum set? That yeah, that would have been bad on acid, probably. I've never done acid, but I'm sure it would <laughs> be very frightening. Uh, okay. We were thinking about encouraging uh, um, our listeners to take some kind of drug, but we haven't figured out what kind of what drug kind of Some kind of new drug will yeah. probably come along and be the cake drug. Let me interrupt before we like talk more about people's past. Um, how did you get the name cake? I mean, where did that come from? Does it stand for something? or? Uh, <laughs> it's John's fault. It's John's fault. Vince, um, well, Vince and I were talking about. It. We thought M Cremora might be a better name, oh, actually. Oh, that's cool. But uh, we, we instead we we decided on cake. I decided on cake. What do you think about Cremora? Uh, I like cake a lot better than Cremora. In retrospect, uh, I was just riding my bike down the street, and Cremora seemed like a good name. I, it seemed like a solid name, didn't it? Yeah, kind of yeah. I think I was maybe <laughs> thirsty for some coffee at the time. Mmm, Cremora. Cake is cool. It, uh, it's <laughs> mainly, I think, the, to explain a little bit about the name cake, it's, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I get it, yeah, like, let them eat cake or something. And it, I don't know if it has as much to do with that. I mean, it, it does if they want it to, um, as it has to do with um, just phonetically. It's a good, strong phonetic uh, sort of sound, uh, a visceral sound for your mouth to make. It has all the phonetic oomph of um, saying, uh, can I say the F word? Mm. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. say it. It has it all the, has all the phonetic oomph of fuck or something. And, you know, it just kind of goes like that. And, um, but without all the other connotations and, you know, it's, 
you know, we yeah. can say it in front of our parents. Yeah, cake is a nice, like, we can put it in the, you know, TV guide or something or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> if it was the other one, we probably couldn't do it. It'd probably be like little stars. And it, yeah, you can't misspell it. But actually they do because it's supposed to be all caps and everybody doesn't. We do probably, that. and it's already late, too late because I think the cable guide went to press. And so it would probably be like capital C, lowercase, the rest mm. of it. So I screwed up there. And I know that's all caps. Oh. Let's talk about like your stickers though. They're so bizarre. It's like cake, and there's like a picture of an ant or something. I mean, is there like a reason for that, or is it just completely random? Uh, I don't know. What do you us? think, Greg? I don't think it's completely random though. Um, it's an ant eating an no, no, not eating, but carrying an aphid. Actually, he's milking an aphid. There's a there's an ant and there's an aphid in the ant's mouth, and he's milking the aphid. And it's actually some he do, he actually just puts the aphid down and. And they, they both benefit from this. The aphid doesn't, like, explode from its milk, and the ant gets to drink the milk. So they both live. <laughs> wow. It's a, it's a farming well, I, I think I better go thing. get my acid. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyways, um, I think we're... Oh, oh. did you want to say something real quick? I'll just comment that most people think that human beings are the only species that, like, has oh. agri-farm, but ants farm aphid, aphids. Ants yeah, they, farm aphids. They basically enslave them, and uh, and I guess it's good because the aphids don't an explode. Aphid <laughs> yeah, but the aphids don't explode. So, uh, that, so okay, <laughs> cool. Well, well, maybe we will pick up something equally profound during your performance, which we are going to watch now. So stay tuned, and let's watch cake. Birds fall from the window ledge above mine then flap their wings at the last minute. I see their dead weight just sort of dropping like stones. Yeah. Birds fall from the window ledge above mine, then they flap their wings at the last minute. I see their dead weight just dropping like stones. But unless I get up and walk across the room to peer down below, I don't see their last minute curves toward horizontal flight. All these birds just dropping from the ledge like stones. Due to a construct in my mind that makes their dropping and their flight symbolic of my existence, it becomes important for me to get up and see their arcs toward flight, as if my life will fall unless I see their ascent. above mine. Then they flap their wings at the last minute. I see their dead weight just dropping like stones. But unless I get up and walk across the room and peer down below, I don't see their last minute curves toward horizontal flight. All these birds just dropping like stones from the window ledge. Due to a construct in my mind, that makes their dropping and their flight symbolic of my entire existence. It becomes necessary for me. It becomes necessary for me to get up and see their arcs towards flight. It's as if my life will fall unless I see their ascent. Mr. Mastodon Vaughn. Mr. Mastodon Vaughn cut swatches out of all material. Mr. Mastodon Vaughn, 
Mr. Mastodon Farm Cut swatches out of all material Mr. Mastodon Farm Mr. Mastodon Farm Cut swatches out of all material
I think I'll pull out my capo here and uh, put it on my guitar. This is uh, how you put a capo on a guitar. Let's see if we can get a close up here. Just pull the strap around there. If you're a beginning guitarist, uh, this will be very useful for you if you want to change keys. And sometimes when you uh, put the capo on, it changes your tuning a little bit, so you have to be very careful. today, the problem of witchcraft. Your pentagram is down below our floor. Your naked body shimmers in the night. Dancing and chanting in a sacrificial rite. 
your feet are dry with the ashes from dead babies. We've passed the test just like all the rest, but never really understood the reason why they took it.
she's got a serrated edge that she moves back and forth. It's such a simple machine. She doesn't have to use force. When she gets what she wants, she puts the rest on a tray in a Ziploc bag. Well, in the freezer. Such a simple machine, she doesn't have to use force. When she gets what she wants, she puts the rest on a 